Okay, what do we have? What do we have? We have a bunch of stuff. We have our Halloween with the speaker picking up little odd bits of... I'll have to get that off later. Um, we have Halloweens. We have a... Um, An old printer um, head, um, linear travel with a with a uh, DC motor on it. We have an Adafruit uh, motor shield. Um, we have a second um, Halloween as well somewhere. A um, couple of batteries for the Halloweens. We've got. The Adafruit um, stereo amplifier breakout, or uh, stereo amplifier, and we've got a breakout for um, storing stereo samples, a soundboard, so we can store sounds in here. The Halloween, I don't think, had much room for storing sound samples, but so. We've got one of these. We've got a motion detector, a pure motion detector. We've got some limit switches. Um, and we need to figure out how to power this motor. We could probably use some, some beefy 18650 battery pack of some sort or even hook it up to uh, an adapter. But <clears throat> and we've got something to hold a pair of Halloweens up and mounted on here somehow and so we're going to do something with this so let's start with this thing this thing needs um, um, this is a DC motor so just by reversing the polarity you can reverse the direction of the motor um, <clears throat> it draws too much current to just drive it directly from a from pins on an Arduino or um, a microcontroller so what you need is some sort of motor driver and that's what the motor shield here is for now this can control either two steppers or four DC motors we only have one DC motor here so we're gonna use that um, and it can um, it transfers power either from 5 to 12 volts it uh, I think it's also around 3 amps total for 20 milliseconds and 1.2 amps continuous. Um, I can't find, well, I could probably look up that part number there and try and figure out how much current this guy draws, <clears throat> or I can measure it, and I'll probably look up the current draw. But um, my gut tells me that um, this thing is going to be able to um, supply enough current to drive this motor. Now, um, this thing is just completely... Um, Un, the, the motor itself is completely um, unrestricted in terms of driving this thing back and forth. But in this particular printer, there's what looks to be like a magnetic um, position sensor. Because that thing in there, I don't know if you can see it, that thing in there, that looks to be like some sort of a um, reed head from a tape recorder or something like that. And I think that is what... And I think that what is what provides feedback to whatever my control circuitry there is that's controlling the um, the printhead position. So um, I'm not going to re that. I'm just going to throw a couple of limit switches on here so that um, when this thing reaches a certain point, I don't know if I can get them through there or whether I'll just mount them up here. I have to find a place to mount them anyway so that... Um, or perhaps here, so that I can get a, um, uh, I can turn the motor off when it reaches the, the limit. And if I reduce the speed sufficiently, I won't destroy things too badly. You know, it looks like mount, drilling a hole through there and just mounting it there will work. The alternative, of course, is to make a little bracket so that this thing doesn't provide a mechanical stop and it can just go flying past a little bit. Um, and I guess, where else could I mount this thing? I might be able to mount it over here so that it does that. But then that would mean drilling out some piece of this in order to mount it. 
and I think it, well, it only has to last a little while. So I, I'm pretty sure that that's the, uh, that's what I'm going to try to begin with, try, try to start with. And so, yeah, um, there's a fair amount of distance there after the click and before it actually bottoms out. So I might be able to, uh, might be able to make that work. So that's one thing. So we've got this linear motion arm so it can um, jack in the box things. And um, well, that's a big hint as to what this thing's gonna do because now we've got a motion sensor that can trigger some sort of a jack in the box idea. And that is what we're gonna make. So a motion sensor to drive a jack-in-the-box. There's some timing circuitry on the uh, on the microcontroller that will suck this back down. And then when it detects motion again, it'll pop its um, head. And then we have to implement some hysteresis in the uh, in the code in order to make it not so that it's just all super janky and every time there's motion it's going to pop and back and forth we, we want to put some hysteresis in there or maybe even some random sleep so that you can't trigger it for a while and so that when you're trying to trigger it you still get some sort of a surprise out of it but anyways yeah um and uh, it's the first time i've ever used one of these pir sensors so we'll um, have some fun playing with that and it'll also be fun doing a bit of mechatronics on um, having a jack-in-the-box, and then we can plop up um, a pair of, of these guys, and that means we'll have a pair of eyes that are popping up, and then there's also going to be some sound that it produces, hopefully, like a bit, well, I don't know what, but um, anyways, yeah, that is the rough idea of what we're going to try and do. Anyways, stay tuned. Okay, the Adafruit <clears throat> motor shell hooked up. Got the sample code for DC motors. Let's see what we got. Okay. It's not too bad. All right, let's put some limit switches in there. Make sure that we can control its motion. <clears throat> okay, limit switches are M two and a half, not M three, so it's wise to check before. Anyways, yeah, um, and just for to keep people honest, the closest American drill is forty six. Um, uh, the third pitch is forty five point four five millimeters, and it's two point zero five millimeters if you're using metric science units. Anyways. That's that. Okay, on these limit switches, there is a no connection marking there. There's a C and there's a <clears throat> normally open. So NO. So when that switch is depressed, that means these two con connections are, are, these two pins are connected. And so you've got a, you've got a switch that works like that. <clears throat> so, no connection, normally open, and common. It actually says normally closed. Does that work? <clears throat> wonder if it is. Mm. Yeah. So you can run this this switch both ways. So either if you want to break a connection when the pin is depressed, you hook up there. And if you want to um, create a connection when this is depressed, you connect up there. So normally closed, normally open, and common. Okay, so we've got a couple of these guys wired up with plugins that we can plug into our Arduino and um, let's see what we can get. 
we have limit switches that will you will use as input to the end stops. Yeah, end stop switches, just like on a laser or on a uh, 3D printer. Okay, so now when it hits the end stops, it changes direction. So <clears throat> we've got our buttons all working, and now we just have to uh, figure out what we actually want to do with that carriage. And I think that's half speed. I'll check the speed. Well, that's much less than half speed. That's PWMing at 50 out of 255. So what is that? 20%? Um, we need to go higher. Okay, so the next step is passive infrared sensors, PIR sensors. And that's what's going to detect motion and is going to trigger the um, jack-in-the-box response. So I don't know if you can see that there, but I've got a... Uh, now, for passive infrared, what these things are doing is they're looking for changes in the infrared. Um, they have um, a detector, which is uh, which has a rectangular field of view. So, in order to and which wouldn't be very useful in and of itself, because it's just got this rectangular field of view that comes out of the sensor. So what um, what people do is they put um, a Fresnel lens on the front of these sensors in order to break up that rectangular field of view into um, various sections. So now you've got a lens that is looking in multiple directions and looking for motion in any one of those um, areas. So um, that's what these little domes are, which are Fresnel lenses that um, break up the detection area on those infrared sensors. So there, there's a really nice write-up on the Adafruit website about how these things work. I might go into them later, but in any event, what you've got is a, I don't know if you can see the, uh, the LED, and I'm not moving, but when I move in front of it, it lights up the LED. And when, after the timeout hits, then the LED goes off. So anyways, yeah, so you've got these sensors um, that should work in various lights, and it's looking, f well, unless somebody shines an IR, um, at it and and uh, blinds it, then we should be okay. So that is going to provide a signal for who is in our field of view, and then I'll have to figure out how what distance we've got to work with so that we can um, determine whether or not that is going to be a reasonable distance to trigger the um, jack-in-the-box. Because you want it to be fairly close to you when you trigger the jack-in-the-box, because otherwise then, well, really, what's the point? Right? What's the point? If it's too far away, it's not going to scare you. If it's nice up and close, then everything everything's good. So that's the next step, figuring out what the range of these things are. Okay, and then the last piece of it is <clears throat> a, uh, a soundboard to uh, deliver voice um, as part of the once it pops up. And so the Adafruit... Uh, soundboard is very nice because it's it's simple you just um temporarily bring one of these um one of its pins low and it's got um zero to nine so that's ten no zero to ten so eleven different samples that you can you can play and you just when you plug it in this thing appears as a um <clears throat> usb drive and you just drag your files on there and depending on what they're called they will trigger off of the various triggers, but also they will do different things. They will either loop and keep repeating until that button is pressed again, or that pin is brought low again, or various other things. But right now I just got it set up so that, left. yeah, I haven't got a, a right speaker set up, but this this will left. give you left or right. That candy's going to rot your teeth. Have more. That candy's going to rot your teeth. Have more. Why have you woken me from my slumber? You want more days to do your Christmas shopping? <laughs> so I think that could have some comedic 
um, effect. Um, and maybe I'll trigger one to play some spooky sounds that I download off the internet. I don't know. Or maybe even the, the um, portal sentry sounds, because I seem to really like those. Oh, there's a... Uh, hmm. Anyways, yeah. So there we go. That seems to be all three components. Um, I'm going to have to do a little bit on weight, because this um, motor, unless I can get 18 volts to drive it, it's probably not going to move as fast up as I want it to. But um, other than that, um, I think all of the components are here in order to come up with um, the Halloween <clears throat> goofiness that uh, I want to explore. Anyways, yeah, um, that's that. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, these are this is a little... Um, what is it, a 20-watt uh, amplifier or something crazy like that? Um, no, 3.7 um, watt amplifier. But still, it produces an, enough sound that you can uh, you can hear it. Um, and also from Adafruit. So um, all part of the Adafruit ecosystem. We got our Hallowings. And this thing's been running all night on this LiPo, and I'm going to check how much um, it's got on it. Um, so I might be able to drive two of these and all of the electronics and then have a separate power supply for the um, mechatronics, and we should be good to go. Anyways, yeah, uh, that has been a lot of fun so far, and I'm... Looking forward to trying to put it all together into something that, I don't know, maybe pops out of a bed of leaves or something like that. That would be fun. But anyways, yeah, um, that's, uh, that's where I'm sitting now. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye for now.